Alright everybody, Terrence Pop here with another episode of Life in the Lair. I got a lot of people who ask me a lot of questions in regard to uh, getting in shape, getting ready uh, for the military, you know, what have you. I got, uh, over the past, uh, you know, five or six years, I've had many requests for somebody to walk them through basically a way to prepare your body for combat. I'm just talking about the prep for the body here. Not really going to go into detail on the mind, but the but the mind and body are linked. So as you get the body into shape, the mind will follow. Okay, basic in AIT is like 12 or 13 weeks now. Uh, this is just three months. Uh, it starts off with, uh, you know, you can start off as... You know, with a very, very soft butterball body. And if you can, you know, push yourself and go the distance on this, you can you can get, reach your goal of, of what you're looking for. Now, what at the end of this three months, this isn't going to uh, turn you into Captain America. Okay, if you do the three months and then you stop, it's going to take three more months and you'll be right back where you began. So after the three months, you could use this as a basically a base to go forward to do bigger and better things. Um, like triathlete people, you know, those guys are probably some of the best in shape individuals you can run across, but they have a lot of specialized equipment and so forth. You know, building this base here will get you ready for just about anything. So let's let's jump into this. So let me get this straight. I gotta spend two and a half years on books and tuition to take useless bullshit just to get at my core classes. <laughs> Space Ghost is on, you can suck my dick. You got any ungrateful relatives? <laughs> well, me too. So buy them something worthless. Get them this book. At the end of the day, they will thank you for getting them something that's priceless. Good advice. So click on the link in the description and learn for yourself why college is a complete waste of time and money. All right, how to prep your body for combat. Now, before you start, you gotta realize exactly where you are in the power curve. All right, some people genetically really don't have to work out that much and they stay at a reasonable level of shape. Uh, those people are few and far between, but they're out there. And then you have the individuals who work out all the time and have a hard time getting into the pocket, you know, where they can perform uh, with enough endurance and strength and so forth to be effective at what they're trying to do. Okay, now the first thing you need to do on day one when you decide to do this is you need to take your fat ass outside and run one mile for time. I mean, which means you run it as fast as you can. Now hopefully You'll be able to do this in less than 15 minutes. Uh, if you are slower than that, okay, is, is that a bad thing? Yes. Is it a good thing? Yes. Because you know where you are now on the great, uh, on the, on the power curve. And uh, from there you can only go up. All right, now you do the one mile run, you do yourself a test for two minutes on push-ups and two minutes on sit-ups. And you do, you know, one to four 200 meter sprints. You know, you gotta give maximum effort. You gotta time everything so you know exactly what you're doing. You know, and then work on squeezing out uh, some chin-ups. Okay, you write all of that down and keep track of it. The next day, 
Or maybe you want to rest a day. That's fine. You wait a day and you start your program. On day one, you're going to start adding 15 to 20, 25% of the distance you ran the day before onto the upcoming run. So on day one, you ran the one mile for time. On day three, it's like one and a quarter to 1.3, 1.4 miles. Okay, take a break one day. Next on day five, you run again. 1.6 miles now in between these days where you're not running you're doing calisthenics go lift weights swim you know you gotta mix it up a little bit uh, to give your body the variety it needs to build up the muscle sets that most of the people in the Western world have neglected all right now if you are like 40 years old and you're just now you know, you know, hauling your ass outside to start working out, this is going to be very difficult for you. Not impossible, but very difficult. All right, day five, 1.6 miles. Day seven, two miles. Day nine, two miles. Day 11, 2.3. 13, 2.6. Day 15, three miles. Now what you're doing here is you're trying to, well, you are going to up your endurance levels uh, with distance. Now I would suggest while you're doing this, you try to add more, you know, cut some time off of uh, the run. <clears throat> Since you knew what your first uh, mile was when you're totally out of shape and you just started out, you can actually start your runs and time that mile and try to shave the time off that mile. I've seen a lot of guys within a month go from, you know, 12 to 15 minute one mile to six to nine minute one mile, which is fairly respectable. All right, now we're going to go on to month, I mean, the second half of the month here. Okay, at day uh, 17 or 18. Your base at 15 days needs to be reevaluated. So you go back and you do the day one workout again. Time yourself to see how you're doing. It's very easy for somebody to get 20 to 40 percent improvement in their performance just in that short amount of time. Okay, now what you're doing here, this is no easy recipe. You're you're not getting into a sarcophagus and coming out Captain America in like 10 minutes. Okay, this is going to take a while to get yourself into a good baseline shape, and it's going to require the efforts of the rest of your life to maintain. Okay, so uh, at day 19, you're going to run your three miles. Day 21, three miles. Day 25, three miles. Now, you're still doing the calisthenics, the free weights, swimming, <clears throat> and other physical activities between those uh, days. So you're basically working out every single day, different parts of your body with you, you know, cracking down on the endurance portion every other day. Okay, when you get up to day 25, you know, running three miles should be fairly comfortable to you now. Um, most of the time, if you have knee problems, they will fade away in the first two to three weeks because your body will adapt uh, to the knees unless you're old and worn out like my, like I am, and that doesn't really work out anymore. For me to you know stay in any kind of shape, I got to do bag work and run on a, an elliptical or treadmill because uh, road work pound, you know, just crushes my knees and hips. All right, now. One of the more important things you need to do to get yourself into a baseline combat shape is you need to build up your ability to carry weight and move with a purpose. All right, you're gonna start this off on day 27 with a, just a 20 to 25 pound rucksack without any water. You're gonna throw it on your back and you're gonna speed walk three miles, all right? So you're going to notice when you do this, 
there is a difference between the speed walking and running. They use different muscles. They affect the ligaments and the cartilage in your, you know, body a little differently. So this might get a little sticky in the beginning as you're, you know, doing both, but it can be done. Okay, day 29, same thing, 20, 25 pound rucksack, three miles. And day 31, run three miles. Now you're going into month two here. All right, now if you've been doing everything, you know, on, you know, on the level with yourself, after one month, you will notice a big difference. All right. Uh, going out running three miles was not going to be a big deal. You're probably going to see a few pounds melt away. Uh, if you're pre-diabetic or you have insulin resistance, you're going to see a lot of those symptoms fade uh, because all of the systems in your body are all interconnected. All right. And your body uses sugar to fuel itself. If you've been just sitting on your ass and eating the same amount of sugar, you're wearing out your insulin uh, receptors in your body. So the insulin that you create doesn't work anymore or becomes less effective. As you start working out, you actually start burning through uh, that sugar that's being stored in the body and causing your body to replenish it from what you eat. Thus, it lowers the insulin sensitivity and you can move the carbohydrates around in your body a lot easier. All right, now month two, you're going to start introducing in between the, the run days sprints. Now, ideally, you want to do, you know, 200 meter sprints, you know, and you want to build up the sets. So you want to start off here with one or two 200 meter sprints um, when you start off your, your sprinting phase. Now, D, uh, day one. You're moving over to a 35 pound rucksack, maybe 45 pounds, somewhere in between there, dry without water. And you're doing a three mile walk. Now you're trying to actually speed walk here. All right, don't, don't nonchalantly just you know, mosey on down the road. I mean, you can do that if you're older, but if you're younger and you want to see better results, you got to pick up the pace on this. You want to go just fast enough that you don't have to do a, a shuffle or a jog, okay, and just slow enough so you can get the full stride of your your walking um, between your legs out, so you stretch everything out and get all those muscles. All right, day three, you're running three and a half miles. Day five, 35 pounds again with the rucksack, taking up to four miles. Day seven, seven, uh, it's day seven and just three and a half mile, uh, run. Okay. Now keep in mind, you keep, you're doing the calisthenics and your, your weightlifting and your 200 meter sprints here in between the days that I've, I have listed here. Okay. Day nine, you're taking it up to 45 pounds to 55 pounds dry without water. You're doing a, f a four mile ruck. Uh, day 11, you're running four miles. So right around two or one and a half months into it, you're now up to four and four. Rucking four miles and running four miles. Okay, uh, day 13, 45 to 55 pounds. You're taking it, uh, you know, on a five-mile ruck march. The next day, it's a five-mile run. Okay, day 16, you're taking it up to 55 to 60 pounds, five mile ruck march. Okay, day 18, 55 pounds again, you're taking it up six miles. Okay, now what you're noticing here is the first month and a half, you've babied yourself a little bit, you're still pushing yourself hard, but you're getting to the point where you got to step it up a little bit to get the results that you want. All right, so what we're trying to get to here is 12 miles, you know, what's it, 55 to 65 pounds dry, and you're gonna do a ruck march with that 12, 12 miles in three hours or less. So we're building up to that here. You see what's going on here. 
Okay, a day 22, 55 pounds, seven mile rock. Day 24, five miles. Now we're not taking the run beyond five miles. Uh, the reason for that is if you can get yourself to the point where you can run five miles, you can run 15, you can run 25. Okay, your, your pace will slow, slow down a little bit. You can do it. All right, now what you're doing here from now on when you run the five miles is you're always trying to run it a little bit faster. Okay, whatever tricks you have to set up, that it is what it is. What I used to do is I used to start off slow, and then I'd pick up the pace right around the second mile once, you know, my body was all warmed up. And then when I got to like three and a half to four miles, I really turned the pace up so that last mile was an absolute smoker. Okay, and you'll notice when you're doing the five miles and you're adding, you know, on the off days, you're doing your 200 meter sprints. As your two 200 meter sprints go up with the number of sets, you will see the time on the five miles drop off pretty quickly. Okay, day 26, 55 pounds, eight mile ruck march. Day 28, five mile run. Day 30, 55 pounds, eight mile ruck. All right, now you're two thirds there for distance. We're now at the end of month two. All right, moving into month three. All right, you're gonna continue to add in the sprints, lift weights, calisthenics, swim, whatever you do in between these days. It's important you do something every single day. Day one, five mile run. All right, you're gonna run this for time. All right, you're going to find out exactly how fast you can run that five miles in with maximum effort. This is important. All right. A lot of the stuff you need to do to self-improve requires max effort and the discipline to do such max effort. Some people will be able to hire a personal trainer. Uh, in, my, in my opinion, that's just a crutch. But what do I know? All right, now we're, day three, we're moving up to 60 pounds. You're going to do eight miles. Day five, five-mile run. Now, these five-mile runs should really, by this time, not be that difficult at all. I mean, if you don't have missing cartilage or, you know, something that's messed up or broken in, in your lower half of your body, your body adjusts to the running. All right, so it's this is really old hat for you. Day seven, 60 pounds, nine mile rucksack. Day nine, five mile run. Day 11, 60 pounds, 10 miles. Day 13, five mile run. Day 15, 60 pounds, 12 mile ruck march. Day 17, five mile run. Day 19, 60 pounds, 12 miles. Now you you should, on these two 12 miler, milers here, you should be timing your pace and trying to get as close to three hours or less as you can for 12 miles. Okay, day 21, five miles. Day 23, 60 pounds, 12 miles. Day 25, five mile run. Day 27, this is the end of the third month, you should be at your target of a 60 pound rucksack, 12 miles, three hours or less. And finally, you finish it up with a five mile run. Now, what you're looking for here is you're looking for that 12 miles in three hours or less. And that five mile run ideally should be 40 minutes or less. Okay, that's that's a tall order for a lot of people out there. But like if you were to go on active duty and try to get into SOCOM or MARSOC or any of the SOF branches, you're going to have to run five miles in 40 minutes or less and do a 12 mile ruck march in three hours or less with between 55 and 65 pounds dry. That's without water or anything. At the end of this third month, you should have your base pretty much down. 
Okay, now this doesn't require you to do a 60 pound ruck march, you know, every other day to maintain combat shape. That's, that's kind of counterproductive. You can dial it down a little bit to still doing your five mile runs in between, you know, your endurance days, you're still doing your calisthenics, weightlifting, swimming, what have you. Even CrossFit will help augment this once you get the base down. You will still need to do the 12 miles every second or third week moving forward at nauseum until you either break or you feel you don't you no longer have to do that um, to stay in combat shape now I personally at my age and I have some health issues I still do the walks but I'll do like you know 30 to 35 pounds six to eight miles you know maybe once or twice a month and I do speed walks instead of running I go to the boxing gym I try to get there at least uh, two to three times a week so you know for all of the punishment I put myself through and all the damage I've sustained up until this point I'm still doing a pretty good job at uh, you know keeping everything even keel now lately uh, I've had some health issues and I've lost like 20 fucking pounds um, going to the doctor to find out exactly what's going on. Hopefully it's nothing serious. Um, uh, got some blood work back. Everything looked okay. So I don't know. Um, I have, I have a feeling that my weight loss has something to do with me cutting out a lot, um, almost all of the alcohol I consume, uh, you know, at night and during the day. So. I'm cutting that back quite a bit. I still have, you know, beer here and there. There's not enough alcohol in that to make a big difference. And I still have a foo-foo drink once in a while. But the whole, you know, four to eight ounces of hard liquor to go to bed every night is coming to an end. With that being said, hopefully you guys found this somewhat useful uh, to get yourself into that combat shape you know you want that body that can you know withstand the rigors of combat you're gonna have to do stuff like this there is no way around it and i'm sure the crossfit guys that strictly do crossfit could probably kick my ass you know in the short in the short term no problem but see if you have to do combat it's not a one hour, it's not a four hour, eight hour event. It's a 24-7, 365 event that ends when you die, you're injured too grievously to continue, or the situation leading up to you needing to be in combat comes to an end. But this is the nitty gritty of getting your body into combat shape. Now I'm sure there's some people out there like, Pop, you're so full of shit, blah, blah, blah. All right, I went to basic training and I went to AIT for infantry. And this is almost exactly what we did. All right, we did add in chin-ups and so forth, which I would suggest on the days between the heavy endurance events. So when you get to the end of three months, you're ready to go. All right, and you will notice when you get to the end of the three months, it's gonna change your mindset you're going to have more energy and you're generally going to feel better.